how it is. Okay guys, and welcome to our second video of Unit 1.5, which is Theory of the Firm for Paper 3 Higher Level, okay? And uh, what we're doing in this video is looking at the idea of revenue and profits and how we kind of bring costs in, combine them with revenue to calculate profits. Now again, just from the last video, I just wanted to kind of, I suppose, repeat myself for some reason, and um, outline, the, outline the reason why an increase in cost of production has resulted in a new supply function. Okay, and all we're saying here is that an increase in cost of production will reduce profitability. That is, reduce the profit margin per good sold, causing producers to be less willing to supply the good at each price. This causes an inward shift of the supply curve. Now, okay, so a music concert is to take place in Country Z. 40,000 tickets are available for the concert. Show the uh, sorry figure three, which is this figure here, shows the demand for tickets at this concert, and that's figure three. Demand starts there up at three hundred, will become important later, and ends here down at sixty thousand, uh, and that will become important now. Draw and label the marginal revenue curve for uh, the concert on figure three. So what I want you to understand is um, the definition of marginal revenue is the extra revenue earned or gained when one extra unit of output is sold. And what I, there is a mathematical relationship with, um, and again, I'm going to draw this in pen, but don't you, with the marginal revenue curve and the demand curve, which is the average revenue curve. The first thing is, mathematically, they both have to cut the um, price axis at the exact same point. But again, mathematically, the marginal revenue curve has to fall by twice as steep as the um, demand curve. Now, if the demand curve touches here at 60, that must mean that the marginal revenue touches um, the horizontal axis at half of 60, which is 30. Okay, so at every stage along quantity, marginal revenue is half what average revenue is. So there's your marginal revenue curve, okay? And again, please don't do what I say, not what I do, because um, I'm only drawing this in pen so you guys can see it. Remember, slopes twice as fast as the demand curve, which is also known as the average revenue curve as well. Touches the same point, slopes twice as fast down. Okay, now, let's have a look here, because we're talking about marginal revenues, the extra revenue gained when one extra unit of output is sold. In this case, one extra ticket. Okay, calculate the maximum revenue now, not profit, revenue, total money in, that you could earn from selling tickets. Well, this I want you to understand is very, very important. Total revenue is maximized, remember this, by producing the quantity of output where marginal revenue equals zero. Okay, well, let's go back here. We've just drawn the marginal revenue curve, and it equals zero there. And the reason that we continue to sell up to 30,000 tickets in order to maximize total revenue is because if we were producing or selling 10,000, um, marginal revenue is positive. Anytime marginal revenue is positive, which is the extra money that we get when we sell one extra unit of output, that means that total wealth revenue will rise if we sell that extra output. So the point now, because it, it does become negative, marginal revenue does become negative, and what we're saying is, up until this point here, every single extra ticket that we got, we'd get extra money, and then we'd have to un pay people to give us, um, to, to come to our concert after that. Okay, so every single ticket we sell, up to 30,000 and including, is going to bring in extra money, which will maximize revenue, not profits. Okay, so let's have a look at this here. Okay, so the, now uh, this is another thing I have to. We know that MR equals zero at 30,000, so how do we find the price? Well, the price is the average revenue. So what we do is we go up to the demand curve at that quantity of 30,000. And we touch it there, and we go across, 
and we find that that is halfway between 100 and 200, so that's 150. That's the price. At each quantity, you go up to the demand curve, the average revenue curve, and that tells you the price that you can sell the stuff at for that quantity. Right, well, what's the formula for total revenue? Well, total revenue is price times quantity. The price is 150, we know why, because that's the price that we get from going up from 30,000. And we go up from the quantity of 30,000 because that's when the marginal revenue equals zero, and that's what maximum maximizes total revenue okay so what I'm just gonna write down here is total revenue equals 150 if you want you can put in the thing here uh, multiplied by 30 one two three and what I have that worked out I'm not a genius I just have worked it out previously is 4.5 million that is the total the maximum total revenue that this firm could possibly earn there is no other quantity that it could sell that would increase total revenue or, 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 or yield a total revenue higher than that amount okay now the fixed cost for the concert have been calculated at three million while it expected there's no variable cost. Now, I do believe we've done this in the last uh, um, video, but I just want to keep on going. Okay, so calculate the average fixed cost per ticket. Well, the fixed cost is 3 million, okay? Now, just to be clear, um, 40,000 tickets are available for the concert. It says that up there, okay? So calculate the average fixed cost per ticket if all tickets are sold. And that's not the, ma the uh, revenue maximizing quantity. That's just selling all tickets. So what we've got here is 3 million because what's average fixed cost? Fixed cost divided by quantity. Fixed costs are 3 million, okay? Divided by 40,000. And what I get is, like the last video, $75 per ticket. Okay, so that's the average fixed cost there. Okay, good, good, good. Now, on to the next question. Right, so... Um Oh my God. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. No. So don't worry about this. But I'll just read it to you anyway. Firm A produces cartons of coffee. Figure one illustrates the total cost and variable cost uh, at different levels of output per month. Okay. So it's just sometimes you just so you see that you're not missing anything. Figure two illustrates the average total cost, average variable cost, and marginal cost at different levels of output for firm B, which produces cans of tea. The price of tea in the perfectly competitive market is presently $21 per can. Using this information, draw and label the average revenue curve. Well, don't forget the average revenue curve is the um, demand curve, okay? And I'm moving numerous things here. And again, please, and it's $21 per can. This is what it says down here. And because it's a perfectly competitive market, um, that means that its demand curve is perfectly elastic. It has no market power. Now, what I'm trying to do is get this right, but you know my eyes are bad. Okay, that looks like 21. And what I'm going to write down here is P equals the demand curve. It is. It's the price's demand curve. It's the average revenue, and it's also the marginal revenue, okay? Because in perfect competition, average revenue equals marginal revenue. Now, I have drawn that there, which is saying, using the information, draw and label the average revenue curve on, on that figure. Using figure two, identify the quantity of cans per month firm B must produce in order to maximize profits. Well, what I want you guys to see here is that profit is maximized when you produce that quantity where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. Now, I think personally that these things are easier done on a um, looked at on a diagram. Now, this is the average revenue curve in red. It's also the marginal revenue curve. This is the average total cost, the average variable cost, and the marginal cost. So what I'm looking for here, just marginal cost again. I know it's written there, but still. I am looking for this quantity here because this is where marginal cost crosses marginal revenue. That is the definition for profit maximization. And what do I mean the definition? Well, it's at that quantity. And I'm sure you guys will be able to see better than me. Okay, at that quantity, and that kind of looks like 105 to me. Okay, at that quantity, that is the quantity that the firm could produce and get the maximum profit possible. Doesn't matter what um, market structure they're in, perfect competition, imperfect, monopoly or oligopoly. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back to here and I'm gonna say, right, realizing this, 
profit maximization occurs right at um, 105 all right no problem and what I'm actually going to do now is I'm going to say another kind of formula for profit we'll see a few right but one of them is quantity multiplied by average revenue which is the price okay I'll write that out in a second minus average total cost which is the quantity average revenue is the price exact same thing that's why I'm writing it out the same thing right now twice so what we're saying is okay well the price is always going to be 21 but what's the average total cost at 105 units what we need to do is go up here touch the average total cost go across and then read off where we're at okay trying to be somewhat neat always in the exam take your time doing this guys okay and i believe it's 21 22 23 that's 23 up there okay so if our costs on average are two dollars higher than our price for every good that we sell how much of a loss are we making right well let me just work this out quickly here and i'll show you because we've got 105 times 21 is the price but it costs us per good on average 23 well that's 105 times minus 2 which equals minus 210 so the firm suffers a loss the firm suffers a loss of uh, 200 210 dollars at a quantity equals 105 now I will remind you that the profit maximization quantity is the most profit possible that the firm could earn and they earn that where MC equals M more to check whether a, a loss or a profit is being earned at that quantity you have to see which is higher average revenue or average cost because average cost is higher I know it's average total cost or average cost because average cost is higher at every single quantity than the price the firm can't earn a profit so what we're actually saying here is the profit maximizing quantity in this case and in every case is the loss minimizing quantity as well okay so that is just something to keep in mind there's another thing the definition of profit maximization where MC equals M more okay now I just want to make sure we're doing fine here and I think I am okay now on to this one sometimes a firm continues to produce in the short run even when it's making an economic loss even when average total costs are greater than average revenue explain why the firm might choose to do this well it's not madness okay in the short run a firm should continue to produce provided price or average revenue demand curve is the average revenue curve is greater than average variable cost okay if the price is greater than the average variable cost it is covering its average variable cost and making some contribution to its fixed costs that means in so doing the firm's losses are less than its fixed cost because even if the firm didn't open they still have to pay their fixed cost granted they wouldn't have to pay their variable cost but they still have to pay their fixed costs so on average if the price which is the average revenue is greater than the average variable cost the firm is covering its variable cost the extra cost it has to pay to open and making some contribution to its fixed costs okay and therefore owes less at the end of the day now what are we on to here okay now what's this that's all good i think to see done that onto 3a yes now excellent okay so the final of the 2018 football world cup is expected to be held there in that stadium in moscow the capital uh, or sorry the capacity of the stadium is 80,000. the expected cost of holding the final is 12 million which is not dependent on the number of people attending the match okay not dependent at all it's fixed all tickets will be sold for the same price okay so just kind of just so you can see the question on the diagram draw and label the supply curve um, for tickets at the football world final okay right so you can see that so I'm just gonna bring it down and all we're saying is the capacity of the stadium is 80,000 
and it, it, it's it's fixed. I mean, you can't grow a stadium uh, in a day at least. So it's perfectly inelastic. And here we have the supply curve at 80,000, okay? It will remain fixed um, throughout the time of the match, okay? It's impossible to increase the quantity of it, right? So that's that first thing, and that means that's done as well. Okay, now, draw, excuse me, I just wanna make sure you can see it. Draw and label the marginal revenue curve for the 2018 Football World Cup final. And again, guys, could not be easier. How do you draw the marginal revenue curve? Well, you look at this, this is 120. This, therefore, is halfway through, which is 60. You join the dots between here, because the demand and marginal revenue curve have to touch at the same, exact same point, and we get this is the marginal revenue curve. And I really hope that makes sense. It slopes twice as steep as the demand curve. Mathematically, it has to. You don't need to derive it, so I'm not going to explain it. There's no points, no benefit to you. All you need to know is they have to touch the exact same point up here, and the MR curve um, goes down twice as slow. Now, using the diagram, which I will keep here beside me, using the diagram, um, um, and your answers to the previous parts. Explain how the organizers could achieve their goal of profit maximization. That's obviously just a, a diagram question. Now, profits will be maximized at what quantity? At the quantity where marginal cost equals marginal revenue. MC equals M or that says there, okay? MC equals M or. As there are no variable costs, only fixed costs, we were told that in the question. How do we know that? Well, it says here there's 12 million which are not dependent on the number of people attending the match. Okay, now I just need you to think about this. Um, as there's only variable costs, or sorry, as there's um, oh, no variable costs, excuse me, only fixed costs, marginal costs are zero because like it doesn't matter the quantity and the the the, the our, our costs are going to be 12 million so therefore all costs are fixed and therefore there's no marginal cost it doesn't matter how many people come up it's still going to charge uh, 12 million it'll be the cost and kind of as such kind of from that there's no extra cost of anybody to sell another ticket this means that profit maximization occurs at the same quantity as revenue maximization where M or equals zero. Now, I really want you guys to understand this, okay? Note, this is a note, you don't need any of this stuff here. This is still meeting the condition for profit maximization. We know the marginal cost equals zero. We keep going until marginal revenue equals zero. So if they both equal zero, will they have to equal each other? All right, so there's no marginal cost on this diagram. All right, so marginal costs are zero. So we need to get to the point where mar the quantity where marginal revenue is zero. And that happens at 60,000 tickets. Okay, so what we then say is therefore the profit maximization and revenue maximization occur at the quantity of 60,000 units and a price of $800. Now the question then may become, well, how did I work out that price of $800. Well, I would hope that we would, would recall that at any quantity, we go up to the demand curve and then go across and we find out the price that can be charged at that quantity and that's $800. Okay, again, guys, I really, really hope that helps. I hope that makes sense. Everything. I hope, I hope, I hope. Okay, now, let's have a look at this graph because we are going to need to be referring to this graph here. Consider a monopolist facing a downward sloping, straight line demand curve. Okay, so now we're bringing elasticity into this. The following diagram illustrates the total revenue curve faced by the monopolist. So as production increases, total revenue, this is not price, this is total revenue, which is price times quantity goes up, up to a point and then down, okay? Now, determine marginal revenue when output is equal to four units. Well, I just want you to see that this here is four, okay? And I want you to understand that the total revenue is a maximum. Now, marginal revenue, anyone that's kind of done any kind of calculus is, the differential, it's, it's, it's the total revenue curve differentiated. 
What does that mean for the rest of us mortals? What that means is it's the slope. The marginal revenue at that quantity is the slope of the total revenue curve at that quantity. And the slope of any max or min, any kind of calculus student will tell you, is zero. Okay, so the total revenue curve, uh, sorry, uh, marginal revenue is the slope of the total revenue curve at that quantity. As the total revenue curve is at a maximum of Q equals 4, the marginal revenue when Q equals 4 is 0. And what I'm saying is marginal revenue equals 0 at Q equals 4. Okay, you wouldn't be asked anything more involved than that, guys. All right, you really wouldn't. You just need to know that. So, on to a winner here. Now, the next one. Um, average revenue when output is, uh, what are we at here, is six units. Okay, well, what we're saying is at six units, if we go up, and I'll go with my red pen, okay, at six units, if we go up to that curve, and then we go across, we get total revenue, okay, total revenue, equals 300 euro but we're not looking for the total revenue what we are looking for is the average revenue well what's average revenue well average revenue is the oh excuse me <laughs> average revenue is the price okay average revenue is the price and how you find average revenue is total revenue divided by quantity so what i'm just going to do here i'm going to write down average revenue equals total revenue divided by quantity well the total revenue was 300 dollars the quantity was 6, so therefore the average revenue is 50. And that's all we're saying, that the price when you sell 6 goods is $50 each. Okay. Determine the economic profit uh, if output is equal to 2 units and average cost is equal to 130 per unit. Well, what I want you to know is profit equals total revenue minus total cost. Total revenue equals price times quantity, and total cost equals um, um, average total cost uh, times quantity. Okay, so what we're saying is at an output of two, right, we'll just go up here, touch the curve and across, total revenue is 300. Okay, so the first thing I can write down here is profit, which is total revenue minus total cost equals 300 that's the total revenue and then we were told that we sold two goods okay minus two times the average cost which is 130 so the profit equals 300 minus 260 and the profit therefore equals 40 dollars okay and i really again i sincerely hope that that is clear and it makes sense now let's have a look at this one here okay um no, you can't see that. Okay, so the following table illustrates the demand conditions faced by another monopolist. Okay, we're not too concerned about what that is yet. Calculate the marginal revenue resulting from a fall in price from 8 to 6. Well, marginal revenue is the change in total revenue over the change in quantity. Okay, so at a price of 6, we've got... Quantity demanded is 36, so total revenue is priced by quantity. So what we've got then is simply 6 times 36, which equals 216, okay? At a price of 8, we've got 8, and then at a price of 8, we sell 24, so the total revenue then is 8 times 24, which is 192, okay? So in order to calculate the marginal revenue, what we've got is the change in total revenue over the change in quantity. Well, the change in total revenue is 216 minus 192. It's revenue 2, TR2 minus TR1. Over the change in quantity, which we've already, well, we didn't work it out. We took it from the, the um, table, which is 36 minus 24. Okay, so that equals 24 over 12, which equals two dollars and the marginal revenue is simply just two dollars okay that's all and again guys what i really want you to and i hope you do start to see this is that there's just a huge amount of repetition now and really kind of nothing else and that's very important to keep in mind it just means that you're well able to do this okay now this question looks crazy and, and never get intimidated you've got to think your way through this stuff 
Firm A, a firm with monopoly power, some ability to change price and not have quantity that people buy from them fall to zero, not have quantity demand will fall to zero, is producing at a level of output Q equal to 150,000 units per month for which the following are true. All figures are in dollars. Okay, so the average revenue, which is the price, is 140,000. The price is, sorry, where did I get 140,000? 140, 140. The marginal revenue is 80. The average cost or average total cost is 60 and the marginal cost is 50. So the values in table one imply the following. Price equals average revenue, because that's for the same thing, which is greater than marginal revenue, which is greater than average cost, which is greater than marginal cost. Okay, let's stay nice and calm. All right, so there's a lot of information given there. Let's see what we can work through. Using the figures provided in table one, calculate the monthly level of profits firm A is making at the current level of output. Right, don't forget, they produce 150,000 units. Their price that they sell each good for is 140 and their cost that it costs them to produce each good is 60 that's their average cost so profits equals total revenue minus total cost profit equals tor minus tc forgive me i suppose i'll be doing that for a while total revenue is priced by quantity so it's 140 times 150,000. total cost is average total cost which is 60 just up there at the very top times quantity so therefore, what's total revenue? Well, total revenue is price times quantity. I'm just gonna pull this down a little bit just so you can see, there we go. So price is 140. Quantity we're told in the question is 150,000. So therefore, as far as I can see, the total money coming into the firm is 21 million. Okay, now what's total cost? Well, we've got average total cost by quantity. So what we have is 60 multiplied by 150,000. And as far as I can see, that's total money in terms of cost going out of the firm is 9 million. So therefore, what's profit? Well, profit is all the money coming in, which is total revenue, which is 21 million, minus all the money going out, which is total cost, which is 9 million. And the answer, therefore, is profit equals 12 million, which is 21 minus 9. And you must forgive me, I just need to push that up at the very end so you can see. Okay, now I hope again, guys, that really makes sense. There's nothing crazy there. All you need to know is what these things mean. Okay, 5B, using the relationship price equals average revenue, and the, they're the same, but are greater than marginal revenue, greater than average cost, greater than marginal cost, and or some figures provided. Determine whether firm A should increase its level of output in order to maximize profits. Well, you need to give a reason. Well, the thing is, Marginal revenue is greater than marginal cost. As output increases, marginal revenue falls and marginal cost rises. We know that marginal MC equals MR is the profit maximizing condition, and these are not um, equal. Marginal revenue hasn't come down, they're not selling enough, they're not producing enough to allow marginal revenue come down to meet marginal cost, and therefore, when that happens at that quantity, they'll be making more profit. So the firm should increase its level of output so marginal revenue is greater than marginal cost. Uh, as, because, so the firm should continue to increase its level of output to the profit maximizing quantity where marginal cost equals marginal revenue. Okay, again, I hope that makes sense. Using the relationship that, determine whether total revenue collected will increase, decrease, or remain unchanged if firm A increases its level of output. Total revenue will increase. Okay, and the reason is because if you increase output, um, total revenue will always increase as long as marginal revenue is greater than zero. Well, we were told in the question here that marginal revenue is 80. The 80 is greater than zero. So if they sell one more, their total revenue will rise by 80. So let's just read this. Total revenue will increase if the firm increases its output as marginal revenue is positive. Increasing output by one unit will add $80 to total revenue and thus total revenue has to increase. And again, um, I really hope that makes sense. Okay, I really, really do. Um, now, on to 5D, which is up the top here. Using the relationship that, which we've been using for a while now, describe how average costs will be affected um, if firm A increases its level of output. Right, well, see, this is the thing now. When marginal cost is below average cost, which it is here, 
An increase in output will cause average costs to fall. So if we have three numbers, okay, 10, 10, and 10, all right, what's the average there? Well, the average, or the average cost, let's say, equals 10, okay, 30 divided by 3, which is 10. Now, let's say I add on a fourth number, the marginal number, right, and that's 6. Okay, well, what's the average now? The margin, marginal number is below the average, right, the average was 10. Now, the average equals 9 because it's 36 divided by 4, which is 9. Because I've added on a marginal number, that's what marginal means, one more, one extra. Okay, I've added on a marginal number that was below the average, that pulls the average down. The same is true with marginal costs and average costs, okay? So, uh, using the, yeah, sorry, describe how average costs will be affected if firm A increases its level of output. Well, average costs will decrease because marginal cost is below average total costs. So therefore, producing an extra unit of output will reduce average total cost for the reasons that we've just stated in that uh, numerical example. Okay, now, um, determine whether firm A is productively efficient at the current level of output. You must give a reason for your choice. It's not. It's not productively efficient. Productive efficiency occurs when a firm is producing that quantity of output where MC equals AC, where AC is at a minimum. Okay, so again, I might as well just draw this here. If I had something like this, and I had my average cost curve and my marginal cost curve, this quantity here is the productive efficient quantity, okay? Because AC is at a minimum. You're using the minimum amount of resources per good that the firm can use. That's the definition of efficiency. Okay, so firm A is not productively efficient as average total cost is greater. Here's average total cost, so they're producing somewhere like this. Okay, they need to increase output, all right? Therefore, average total cost is not at a minimum. So productive efficiency occurs at that quantity where marginal cost equals average total cost. And again, I'm sounding like I'm repeating myself a lot, but again, I hope that makes sense. Okay, now explain why allocative efficiency is achieved in the absence of externalities at a level of output where price or average revenue is equal to marginal cost. Well, let's just think about this. As long as price is greater than marginal cost, output should continue to increase until the marginal benefit, which is price, they're all, the consumer's only going to pay that for a good, the price, whatever it is, if they value it by at least that much. Okay, so the marginal benefit equals marginal cost. So MB, the marginal benefit to society is equal to the marginal cost. As a result of this, social or community surplus will be increased if you increase, if, if, if price is greater than marginal cost. This ensures that all units valued more by society than they cost to produce are produced. We want production as well, okay? But up to a point, up where the marginal benefit is equal to the marginal cost, up until that point where price exceeds marginal cost, or pr sorry, price equals marginal cost for the last unit produced, okay? Um, basically, we need to keep producing goods as long as society values them more than the cost of production, more than the amount of resources that are used in their production. Now, this is something that some students may find difficult, and I really, really hope you don't. Okay, so what I started to do was I said draw it. Now, numbers are not required. So the first thing I kind of did was I drew my marginal cost curve. Then what I did was I drew, and you keep these low, my average cost curve, knowing that this has to be a minimum. And then what I did was I went over here, drew, and it, just, it doesn't have to be wide, it just has to be high, drew my marginal revenue and then and they're not looking for this to be twice as far out um, at all guys they're, they're just looking for this to be kind of and then this is the demand curve or the average revenue okay and well how do we know what we've got and again guys always use um, um, always use pen that's a lie always use pencil oh, I'm sorry um, Okay, so it's at this quantity, all right? Well, look, let's have a look here. This is the marginal cost, okay, MC. This here is the average cost, or average total cost, okay, AC. 
or ATC. This here is the marginal revenue, M or, and this here is the average revenue, or the price. And that's P equals A or. Now, let's have a look. Have we done this? P equals A or is greater than M or, that's right, which is greater than AC, yeah, that's right, which is greater than MC, yeah, that's right, I've done it. Okay, and that's essentially that one. And, and I just, I probably think it's um, just a bit of practice, really, that'll probably get you over the, over the line on that one. Okay, guys, now, the next one that we're looking at is this idea of normal profit. So there's three types or three states of profit, I suppose. And one of them is normal, the other one is abnormal, and the other one is a loss, a negative profit. Okay, and all of them are comparing average revenue and average cost. Okay, so if average revenue is greater than average cost, you've got abnormal profit. If average revenue equals average cost, you've got normal profit. And if average revenue is less than average cost, you've got a loss. And don't forget, um, both average revenue and average cost will change as quantity changes. So normal profit is the level of profit which is just sufficient to keep a firm in the business in the long run. Basically, it's the, the same amount as, as the entrepreneur could earn elsewhere doing something else. Okay, so it's enough to cover explicit and implicit costs. Explicit costs is costs that require an outpayment of money and implicit costs are costs like opportunity costs, what you could earn elsewhere. It is the return that could have been earned by the entrepreneur in the next best alternative employment and as such is enough to cover both explicit and implicit costs. And again, you know, I've said that and I just wanted to make sure that I have said that. Okay, excellent. On to a winner here. Now, let's look at this, okay? So, no, no, God, that's way too far. Okay, right, so a little bit more. The following diagram illustrates the demand and cost conditions of a firm. Identify the profit maximizing level of output for this firm. You must give a reason for your choice. Well, I'm gonna tell you straight away, it's there. And how do I know that? Well, it's that quantity where marginal cost equals marginal revenue. See here, here's the marginal revenue line. It can always be negative, I stop it there, but it, can, it does go to zero. Um, and then here's the marginal cost. Boom, that's it there. That's the quantity right there, that quantity. Wherever that is, you go down, that's the quantity, 17, okay, so 17,000. The profit maximizing level of output uh, is Q equals 17,000 units. This is the level of output that occurs at the profit maximizing condition where marginal cost equals marginal revenue. Just boop, put that up a bit so you can read that and kind of pause the video and look at it. But that's the reason, because at this quantity, MC equals MR. Now, we haven't found out price. We go up, that's the average cost, right? You can go across and you're at 11 but we go up to the demand curve and across, and that's 20. So they're gonna sell each good for 20, but it costs them on average 11 euro to make it. Okay, so, or forgive me, dollars, 11 dollars. Um, my Irish used to the euro. Okay, 7B. Now, here we go. Going well here, guys. Okay. Um, now, calculate the total revenue and total cost and the profit or losses for this firm at the profit maximizing level of output. Right, well, let's look at total revenue Flip, what have I done with this? Fine, 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 perfect. Total revenue equals price times quantity. Okay, we've already established at this, why this is the um, profit maximizing level of output, because it's the quantity at which MC equals MR. We go up to the um, demand curve and across, and that tells us the price. So we're selling 17,000 at a price of $20 each. So 20 times 17. One, two, three, why not? Do it in red pen. Equals 340, one, two, three. Okay, total cost is average total cost multiplied by quantity. Well, we already know what the quantity is, 17,000. How do we find the average total cost? Well, it's the average total cost of this quantity. This is the profit maximizing level of output because it's underneath that point where MC equals MR. So you go down and you say, that's the quantity. How much does it cost on average? Well, you go up to the average cost curve and across, and we've said it's $11 on average. So what we're gonna say now is 11 multiplied by 17,000 equals 187,000. Well, profit equals total revenue minus total cost. Okay, total revenue is 340,000. 
Total cost is 187,000. So therefore profit equals, as far as I can see, 153,000. And again, I hope you see where these numbers are coming from. Okay, now, identify the level of output the firm would choose if instead of profit it aimed at maximizing revenues. And you have to give a reason. Well, it would be this quantity here of 20,000, because that's the um, quantity where um, MOR becomes zero. And that's how you maximize revenue. Okay, and by the way, where that happens, if you go up, the PED for the demand curve there is one, is unity. Okay, so you've maximized total revenue at that point. All right, now, um, total revenue is maximized by producing the quantity of output where marginal revenue equals zero, and that happens at 20,000 units. Okay, explain the meaning of the term allocative efficiency and its implication for social or community surplus. Well, allocative efficiency means that society's resources are allocated in the best possible way. We're making the right amount of every single possible good if every market is allocatively efficient, all right? And as a result, just the right amount of the good is produced from society's point of view. That means, if that happens, social surplus is completely maximized. And again, you must forgive me, guys, you didn't even see the question, I'm so sorry. That's, you know, again, you can pause it, look at that, uh, read it, but that's what's happened, okay? So from all society's resources are allocated to their best use. There's no such thing as perfection, okay? We, we live in an imperfect world, but their best use, they're making the perfect amount of each stuff based on um, society's preferences and our abundance of factors of production. And if we do that, well then total or community surplus, which is producer and consumer surplus added together, is maximized. Okay, referring to the diagram, identify the level of output that should be produced for allocative efficiency. You must give a reason for this choice. Right, well I'm just, well you can see that it's at 26,000, but this is what I want you to understand. Is that at 26,000, price here equals what? Marginal cost. Okay, price equals marginal cost. And what I want you to understand that is the marginal benefit that the last consumer gets is equal to the marginal cost it costs society, which is this firm, okay? So what we're saying here is that output should continue to increase from society's point of view until a price of 12 and a quantity of 26,000. However, they won't do this because they're profit maximizers. So they'll only produce 17,000. So what's that? Um, 9,000 below the socially optimum amount. Okay? Now that's the theory. Uh, I don't believe we have the right to force anyone to work. I mean, so, um, you know, uh, still just saying that's the theory, but it uh, doesn't always hold up to even minute amounts of, of logic. Um, allocative efficiency occurs at the level of output where Q equals 26,000 units. The reason being is at this level of output, price, which is average revenue, right, gotten from the demand curve at a quantity, equals marginal cost. Now, where are we doing here? So, A, B, C, D, E, F. Wow, there's a lot of stuff in this, guys. We're almost done. Okay, so productive efficiency occurs when the firm produces that quantity of output where average total costs or average costs are at a minimum. It occurs where the marginal cost curve crosses the average total cost curve. And just to show you, 23,000 is productive efficiency. Okay, that's productive efficiency. That's when we're using the, the least amount of society's scarce resources on average to produce each good. All right, so that's productive efficiency. And this is allocative efficiency. Yeah, so I mean, they can't both be efficient and both be perfectly efficient and both be wrong. Okay. Now, with reference to the firm's revenues, comment on the PED of demand at point F on the demand curve. Right. Well, this is what I want you to understand here, right? So, point F happens above the um, revenue, the total revenue maximizing quantity. What that means is that this is the total maximum quantity. Now, the de now we know, therefore, that the demand curve at this point has to be 1. Okay, so PED equal 1. Okay, um, and the reason is, if we produce 1 less, 
total revenue falls. If we produce one more, total revenue falls. When PED is at, a, is at one, total revenue is at a maximum. Actually, let me just see if I can go through some of my sheets that I have here, uh, which may take me a second or two, so bear with me. And basically, if we went back to that diagram of the total revenue curve, um, if I can find it, but I think I'm getting closer. Um, and if I went back to that diagram, which I have here, this is not a demand curve, this is a total revenue curve. At this point here, the demand curve would have a PED of 1. Okay, so please, please, please keep that in mind. At total revenue being maximized, PED is equal to 1. All right, so at point F in the demand curve, the price elasticity of demand for the good equals 1. PED equals 1. The reason for this is that at point F, the marginal revenue is 0. The marginal revenue curve crosses the quantity axis. Okay, and um, yes, I have said all that. And very important stuff to keep in mind, but remember it remember it guys remember it okay so i mean if you remember this stuff um you're on to a winner okay sorry i spoke a bit too soon I've got some time left explain why a profit maximizing firm with monopoly power will never choose to operate on the inelastic portion of its average revenue curve okay the inelastic portion okay that means at low prices shall we say at prices below point f um yeah Okay. Well, the reason is, this is it here, at prices below um, 18. We're saying uh, they will never operate on, on this portion of the, um, the average revenue curve. That's what we're saying. Okay, so if, average, if demand or average revenue is inelastic and price rises, then total revenue will rise also. And since the firm is selling and as such producing less, it's getting more money in, it's selling less, so its costs are going to fall. So therefore, its total revenue is rising and its costs are falling, so they're just going to increase profit if they reduce output. So therefore, profits cannot be maximized when operating on the inelastic portion of the demand curve, and as such, they're going to increase price and reduce the amount of goods and services that they produce and sell. Okay? So therefore, that's one reason. Or, and just so you can complete your understanding, profit maximization occurs at that quantity where marginal cost equals marginal revenue. Marginal revenue is negative in the inelastic region of the demand curve. Okay, it's below the horizontal axis. So marginal costs cannot be negative. So therefore, they can't be producing at the profit maximizing quantity. If they produce less, their profit would rise. So therefore, marginal revenue can only equal marginal cost in the elastic region of the demand curve. Okay, now we're doing well, guys. I know we've been going on for um, a while, but trying to just keep moving on as quick as we can, I suppose, okay? Mm. Excellent. Now, just keeping my cheat sheets together. Okay, so, actually, I might just continue writing in red. Um, total revenue equals price times quantity, and total revenue is P times Q. But this is a perfectly um, um, elastic, uh, a perfectly competitive uh, and uh, um, firm, and as such, face a perfectly elastic demand curve where price is 18 euro. I'm sure that's not euro. See, I had to change that so it's dollars. Forgive me. All right, 18 dollars. I love the euro, seemingly. Okay, uh, I actually don't. But anyway, um, okay, so this is P equals D demand curves, the price, the demand curves, the average revenue curve, and it's also the marginal revenue curve. Okay, now. What are we saying here? Calculate firm A's, part B, calculate firm A's total revenue if it produces 180,000 units per month. Okay, so total revenue, well, its price is always going to be the same at $18, not 18 euro, and it's going to be 180,000. And because it's perfectly elastic, whatever they produce, they can sell. So all we're just doing is multiplying one by the other. And I got a total answer in dollars, not euro, of 340,123. That's what I got there. Okay. So, and I'm relatively confident I'm right. Okay. So identify the firm's short run profit maximizing level of output, where MC equals flipping well MR, guys. This is the MOR curve. I know it's the AOR curve as well. It's two for one, but this is the MC curve here. I'm just going to show you, right? That's the quantity of 140,000. But what I'd like you to see is that we have to go across 
yeah, from where we touch the average cost curve, because we know the price is going to be 18, right? We're told that. We know that. We're told that in the question. But at this, and it's always going to be 18, it's a perfectly elastic demand curve. But at this, and if I've drawn it correctly, if, I, if it does actually in fact touch there, I think it's around 14. So we're saying they're making $4 abnormal profit per good, but they sell 140,000 goods, okay? Um, if they were choose to go with the profit maximization. So profit maximizing level of output occurs at that quantity where marginal cost equals marginal revenue. And that happens, oh flip, I'm sorry guys, that happens at quantity of 140,000 units. And again, I really do hope guys that that makes sense. All right, really, really do. Um, on to the next one, okay. Profit maximizing level of output, right. No, we've done that. Calculate firm A. Uh, short run abnormal profit or loss okay well let's go and I'll stick with red so you can see the difference okay what we're saying is they're producing 140,000 they're selling it for $18 each okay so total revenue is 18 times 14123 which equals total revenue coming in 2,520 okay now total cost which is average total cost times quantity okay equals sorry i'm going to go back here and where did i get this from because it went across up to the average total cost curve and then across and got 14 yeah so i'm going to go at uh, 14 times 140 thousand equals one nine six zero one two three and therefore the profit equals total revenue minus total cost so it's two five two zero one two three minus one nine six zero one two three which is a total profit now of five hundred and sixty thousand usd okay and again i really hope that makes sense guys and i hope you could follow along the last one which is the very last question you'll be delighted to hear i'm sure is define the term satisficing okay so what is it it's when you don't try and maximize profits you try and maximize revenue in some way and i'm giving you three so anytime you see an or or an or you can choose one of these all right i just want you to understand what these things mean satisficing refers to the idea that a firm tries to make enough profit to either satisfy different stakeholders and not aggressively pursue profit maximization or a firm tries to make enough profit to pursue non-profit maximizing objectives, something like market share they're trying to achieve, they're not producing REM equals M or they're trying to sell to the most people as possible. Or a firm doesn't try to maximize profit because decision makers don't have the necessary information in order to maximize profit. So they're just trying to do something else. Guys, I will stop there. I'm sure you're exhausted. Thank you so, so much for watching and I really hope to see you in the next video.